Philip Mopin, and thank you very much indeed for joining us in this program. Glad to be here as always. About the crisis in Central African Republic, how does the French intervention impact the population? Well, the, the people of the Central African Republic have made overwhelmingly clear they do not want French intervention in their country. Uh, the recent overthrow of the government that put into power the Seleka rebel forces was a repudiation of France and its legacy in, in Africa. Um, and, and they've clearly communicated that they don't want it there. And so to have, to have foreign troops in the Central African Republic is a violation of the sovereignty of the country. And, and it, it's a crime, and it should be opposed by progressive and peace-loving people around the world. Uh, French troops are in the Central African Republic to supposedly restore law and order there. But how much can foreign military intervention help resolve the crisis? And how much is this intervention for real? Well, there's always a justification whenever there is military intervention. It's always justified. However, if you look at the results, um, every country in recent history where there's been Western intervention, the result has not been peace or stability or diplomacy. One looks at Afghanistan right now. If one looks at Iraq, if one looks at Libya, you know, where have Western powers gone into a country and created stability and peace? It just hasn't happened. The result usually is more instability, more poverty, more suffering, more death. Um, so, you know, the, the track record simply isn't there. Um, you know, it was, uh, you know, whether it's the, the U.S. intervention in the Middle East uh, or, in, or in Libya, whether it's, uh, whether it's the intervention of the French in Mali and other places, we're not seeing stability or peace being created. If these are peacekeeping forces, where's the peace that they're supposed to bring about? You don't see peace. In reality, you know, there's something else going on because the results are always the opposite of what is promised. Uh, we are seeing African countries again becoming the target of Western countries. We have the Central African Republic and Mali being the target of French colonialism once again. What is the long-term plan, and how will this have an effect on the economy? Well, Africa is one of the richest continents in terms of resources. Africa has oil. Africa has very, very important minerals. It's a very wealthy continent, but the people of Africa are impoverished. Uh, you know, there's high rates of starvation, high rates of illiteracy. And the reason that the people of Africa are impoverished, despite the wealth of, of, their, of their continent in terms of, of natural resources, is because they do, not control, they do not control their own destiny as a country. The Western corporations, the bankers, they're, they've really been controlling Africa, and there's nothing new about this. In fact, World War I was largely fought. It was largely a fight between the Western powers fighting over who got to control the African continent. Uh, you know, there's always been a scramble among the wealthy Western imperialists over who gets to control Africa, who gets to keep the resources and all of that. And it's only been, you know, recently that we've seen a rise in African people fighting back and rejecting that and saying that we have the right to control our own continent and our own resources. Um, Muammar Gaddafi in Libya was very famous for making the oil in Libya the property of the people. And as we saw, Obama and NATO bombed and destroyed Libya, and, and now the, the, the oil in Libya is back in the hands of, of Western, Western colonial, colonialists and bankers. Um, as the U.S. global, as the U.S. economy and the, and the global economy is really crashing right now, um, there's a desperate effort to try and make profit anywhere that could be made. And there's an attempt to, to retake control of the African continent, reassert control of the African continent by Western bankers and, and imperialists. And, and that's a drive that we're seeing, whether it's, you know, the attack on, on Libya, which had disastrous results for the Libyan people. They had the highest life expectancy on the African continent. Now, now they're, you know, they're living in mass poverty. The country's in chaos with warlords and groups fighting each other. Uh, or, you know, you look at, uh, you know, at what the French have done in Mali with thousands being killed and civilians and death. You look at the attempts now to overthrow the president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, and in retaliation for his efforts to redistribute land. Uh, you know, all over Africa, there's an attempt to reassert colonial power. And really, because the Soviet Union doesn't exist, you know, there are no, there, there's, there's not any big power that is really aligned with the African people against the Western corporations and bankers. Now, China is starting to play a role in Africa. And you'll notice that's, that's also part of what's going on, is there's a real attack on any government in Africa that, that supports or is aligned with China. And that's, that's, that's an interesting development that we're seeing. Even though China is not playing the same role the Soviet Union played with you know, providing arms and assistance, it's simply a business relationship. 
any African government that dares to align with China is suddenly threatened by the U.S. and, and Western corporations. So this is, this is a global struggle, but it's, it's taking place on the African continent, and it's a struggle over resources. Mr. Mopin, how is it that some interventions are done by the United States in certain countries and continents, and some of them are done by uh, France and some by others? Uh, have they divided the world for themselves, I mean, the resources and so forth? Well, it must be particularly humiliating for the people, you know, of the Central African Republic and of Mali to have French troops intervening there, because there's a whole ugly history of French colonialism and and French, you know, direct colonialism of the African continent. And and you know, I mean, you you hear horrific stories from the people who grew up under French French colonialism, whether in Algeria or other places. People people from Algeria, people, people from, from different countries in Africa who in school were forced to learn that their ancestors were the Gauls, you know. Just, just basic points of degradation. People in Africa not even be al- being allowed to l- learn their own history. People being murdered and rounded up. And so there's a whole ugly history of French colonialism in Africa. So for the French to reassert themselves and be attacking Africa right now, it should be, it should be a, a, an exposure. You know, they say they're going in for peacekeeping. They just care so much. But but that's, that's a lie, because they're the former colonial occupier. And the U.S., uh, France, Britain, Germany, these are the Western countries that kind of have had an arrangement. Uh, they've kind of had, had a mutual arrangement since, since the collapse of the Soviet Union and, and prior, that, that you know, they're going to divide the world up among themselves, and, uh, you know, their job is to, to keep the world for the West, and they've kind of divided it up and given a peace, you know, to every, every power. But we're seeing rivalry grow between the United States and the European Union. We're seeing some rivalry between German banking interests and the United States. And this alliance may break. This may be an unstable alliance. But it seems that all the Western powers, France, the United States, um, Britain, Germany, they're all kind of united in their hatred for any, any independent economic development, whether it's a country like Iran that, that has nationalized the oil and you know, has in, a course of independent economic development, whether it's China, which is, you know, you know, is an independent you know, country that, that is you know, kind of developing economies around the world, whether it's, you know, whether it's Russia, you know, there's hatred among these powers. They all share a hatred for any country that wants to throw the West out and begin a course of independence, because that would really render the Western banking interests irrelevant. You know, if countries are able to develop independently, then there's no reason for them to allow themselves to be exploited by the bankers. And the whole role that, that, that U.S. banking, the IMF, the World Bank, the, uh, the World Trade Organization, their whole role is to make countries subjugated and to control them economically. And if people break the chains of that, then all of a sudden their, their power is being very, yes. very threatened. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us in this program, Mr. Caleb Malpin. Oh, glad to be here as always.